There's one really important nutrient deficiency involved in Lyme disease that you absolutely need to know about. And you can do all these regular conventional treatments and even alternative treatments, but without this one nutrient, you're gonna have a hard time recovering 100%. And I'm gonna show you a simple solution that you can do to overcome this. The nutrient deficiency in Lyme is vitamin D. Now, the big question is, why? Well, that's because this spirochete in Lyme disease, this very specific microbe, has a very sneaky trick of blocking your ability to receive vitamin D. In other words, you can have normal vitamin D levels in your blood and be severely deficient of vitamin D deep in your tissues. The way vitamin D actually works, typically from sun, the sun hits your skin that then goes through several changes within your liver and your kidneys to eventually turn into the active form of vitamin D. But it then has to be received by the vitamin D receptor, which is deep inside your cells in the nucleus of the cell. But the unique thing with this microorganism in Lyme and what it does to your vitamin D receptor is it downgrades that receptor by 50 to 80 X. The ability of your immune system to fight back is pretty much nullified. So all these remedies and antibiotics are, are going to try to kill it, but your immune system is still weakened. Now, I'm going to show you how to fix this problem, but I really want you to understand why so many people with Lyme are suffering for years and years and years unnecessarily. Other microbes also do the same thing, especially viruses like Epstein-Barr virus, and even certain types of cancer also downgrade the receptor for vitamin D. This is their dirty little trick to overcome the defenses of your own immune system. It's basically like being in this battle between you and another army and having the ability to remove the weapons on the other side. You know, the problem is there's no routine blood tests that you're gonna be able to test this vitamin D receptor problem. You really can't go by what's in the blood. You have to do a specialized vitamin D receptor test, and I will put that link down below if you want a couple options. So here you are, you're at the doctor, you get a Lyme test, becomes positive, you check your vitamin D, it's normal, but it's not really normal deep inside. I mean, just think about how many other conditions are related to a vitamin D deficiency. Autoimmune diseases, cardiovascular diseases, certain cognitive problems. So there's estimations up to 30% of the entire population has a problem with this vitamin D receptor. But a huge portion of people that are overweight have resistance to vitamin D at the receptor level. Other microorganisms also uh, have this nasty trick like chlamydia, mycoplasmas. So basically there's this hijacking occurring at your vitamin D receptor. And it basically usually gets unnoticed because it's not on a routine blood test. Toxic mold aspergillus also can downgrade this vitamin D receptor. When you get a blood test for vitamin D, usually they test the inactive version for various reasons I'm not going to get into. But if you ever check your active version of vitamin D, sometimes that's actually even higher just because of the compensation of what your body is trying to do to push through and override this vitamin D receptor resistance. And so if you ever get that blood test done and the doctor sees that your blood vitamin D levels are high, what are they going to tell you? Make sure you don't take vitamin D. So wherever you are in the stage of this Lyme disease, vitamin D is going to be really important to turn this thing around. But how are we going to override this resistance to vitamin D. Well, I'm going to give you a bunch of things to do because the darker your skin is, the more vitamin D you're going to need and the less vitamin D you're going to get from the sun. The older they are, the less absorption of vitamin D you can have. The lower your cholesterol is, or let's say, for example, you have liver problems or kidney problems, or let's say you had your gallbladder removed, or you're on a statin. All of these are additional barriers to vitamin D. So you need certain things like zinc, magnesium, to allow vitamin D to work. If you're also consuming seed oils, that can block your absorption for vitamin D. And of course, if you're a smoker, that could also be an issue. How do we increase vitamin D? Well, number one, you start taking large amounts of vitamin D, but I wouldn't take it every day. If we wanna get more penetration to override this resistance, you wanna take 
a lot of vitamin D, like 50,000 I use sporadically, maybe once a week. Now, of course, being out in the sun is going to help. Omega-3 fatty acids are also important. Resveratrol is another thing you can take to help increase the receptiveness of the vitamin D receptor. Intense exercise will also help. The phytonutrient quercetin can help as well. And zinc and boron and even progesterone and sulforaphane are all compounds that help override this problem. But there's one more thing you can do that actually can help you. Uh, Tutka is a type of bile salt that also activates the vitamin D receptor. I did some research on this and I was looking at all the alternative ways to kind of allow that vitamin D receptor to work better and bile salts came up, which is fascinating. Now you know one of the most important nutrients involved in Lyme that could potentially take your problems that you have right now and put them right straight into remission. Now, there's more to learn about your immune system. If you have not seen this video, check it out. I put it up right here.